This is your 28storms.com tropics update on this Tuesday, June 19th. The Hurricane Center is still highlighting this low to the northeast of Bermuda, but it's moving away from land, so it is absolutely no concern. And the tropical wave in the western Caribbean is now being highlighted with a 10% chance of development. And third and finally, they are still looking at the eastern Pacific low, which is being given a 60% shot at development over the next two days. So with all that said, the main focus continues to be on the tropical wave interacting with a mid to upper level trough in the western Caribbean. You can see that convection remains prominent and it is now beginning to expand into Cuba and southern Florida. In fact, the rainfall chances for southern and central Florida should only rise over the next few days. But as you can see, nothing is overly organized. Uh, the convection is still spread out from southwest to northeast and that is the result of this mid to upper level trough and you still have this associated upper level low swirling in the southeast Gulf of Mexico. This upper level low is forecast to move more toward the north and west, which is going to allow for an upper level ridge to build over the western Caribbean and Yucatan Peninsula, but there are still big questions as to whether or not the upper level conditions will become favorable enough to the point to where we can get a tropical depression or tropical storm. The wind shear charts confirm the presence of steady westerly and northwesterly wind shear over top this tropical wave, but down toward the south we still have this building upper level ridge. It's currently just too far south and west to support any development. We'll just have to wait and see how things evolve over the next few days as to how far north this upper level ridge can build. But for now, as long as this wind shear stays in place, the low level vorticity max is going to remain elongated from southwest to northeast. And if this current pattern remains, then tropical development will be hard to come by. The good news in terms of wanting any development potential is that the initial eastern seaboard trough is starting to lift out. And over the next 24 and 48 hours, we're going to continue seeing the eastern United States ridge build back in. And that is going to allow for the upper level ridging to make a return down toward its south. However, as we go into 72 hours, here comes another trough over the Great Lakes, and the European is keeping this second trough amplified a little bit longer as we go into day four and day five. So the big question will become, will a lot of this energy get picked up by the first and even the second trough as it gets drawn across the Florida Peninsula, or will we still have some leftover low pressure energy over the central Gulf, and then will it get captured underneath this much larger ridge and then shunt it more toward Texas and Mexico? Since we are so early in the game, that is a question that is really difficult to answer at this time. And we're going to go ahead and now show the low-level vorticity and sea level pressure forecast from the European model. And initially, we have nothing but this broad low pressure area across the West Caribbean. And you can see the vorticity max slowly inching its way into the central Gulf of Mexico by 48 hours. And by day three, the most concentrated area of low pressure is still forecast to be west and northwest of Cancun, Mexico. And by 96 hours, it looks like the storm is beginning to organize as that second ridge starts to build in over the top. But here we go with the energy being drawn out again by day five and by day six and day seven. We see more of the energy getting ejected to the northeast once again, which is going to set the stage for even more rainfall for the Florida Peninsula. Furthermore, the GFS and ECMWF are in rather good agreement with one another this afternoon. You see the GFS is also bringing the central Gulf system into the uh, region by 96 hours, but then as we go into day four and five, it's also getting stretched out toward Florida. So either way, this is looking like a Floridian rainfall event. And as to how much makes this into the Texas and Mexican coastline down the road, well, that is still a big question mark because as of right now, it all depends on how much that trough wants to amplify over the East Coast. And there is still a lot of model disagreement with regards to that. The following is the latest five-day precipitation accumulation forecast from the Hydro Meteorological Prediction Center. And you can see that there is a five to six inch bullseye sitting just off the Naples coastline, extending southeastward into the Florida Keys. And there's a chance that this may even be slightly overdone as you work your way a little bit toward the north. Again, it just depends on the placement of the tropical wave. And on the flip side, the GFS solution may be a little bit overdone with the precipitation. The following is its forecast totals between two to six days into the future, and it is showing an excess of seven to nine inches just off the coast of Tampa, Florida. And finally, for our viewers in Mexico, we're still monitoring this area of low pressure just off the coastline, but it is looking a little bit more ill-defined compared to just 24 hours ago. There are indications that the low-level circulation is becoming exposed on the northern end, while all of its convection gets shunted toward the south, 
And as we talked about yesterday, we noted that on the water vapor we had this trough with a lot of dry air and vertical wind shear moving its way a little bit more toward the southwest than what the models were indicating. And if this trough were to dive too far toward the southwest, then that would completely eliminate any chances of development. And the trends on the water vapor are encouraging. It looks as though we could get lucky and the system may not develop at all, and that is what we are currently going with. Nevertheless, though, keep it tuned to the Hurricane Center outlook as they still think that this system has a 60% chance of development. Either way, another good thing in the model so far is that it looks like they are trending a little bit more out to sea. So even if the storm were to form, there is a good chance that this low pressure circulation will remain offshore throughout its life cycle. And once again, for those interests out there across the Gulf Coast, you still want to keep it tuned to the tropical weather updates over the next week or so. There is no question that there will be a lot of disturbed weather out there, and Florida will be taking the full brunt in terms of the rainfall aspect over the next five plus days. But the question mark still exists as to whether or not this storm will develop. It's still a little bit too early. We need to figure out exactly where this low pressure center will want to form the most over the next 72 to 96 hours and hopefully we will also see some increasing model agreement with regards to the forecast pattern. So thanks again for tuning in to 20gatestorms.com. Don't forget to leave your questions, comments, or anything else that you may have underneath the videos on our YouTube page. So go ahead and do that and please subscribe to the Hurricane Tracker app. You can access all of our videos on the go using that application. So thanks again and have a good afternoon.